As you're joining in, of course, share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. But um, do you really think about how much the ability of God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think? Do you really think about what that really means that God on purpose will let you dream and think about things and then he'll take you further than what you dreamed about? He'll bring you into a thought life of fantasizing about something, wanting something, longing for something, and then he'll do more than that. He'll increase and go further than what you expected. The Lord was talking about in the Gospels that uh, before you say anything, before you ask for anything, the Lord already knows what you have need of. So before you ever pray, the Lord already knows what you have need of. Just think about it. So when you go to him in prayer, he had already thought about what you're currently thinking about. And he already provided for that in abundance. So this is where trust, it takes away all the mental battles and the sorrows of the mind. Because says if your mind is being wounded by worry and fear, what happens is over time, you become you become drained, you lose energy, and then you actually become demonic because those emotional places that you go are hellish. And then says, if you notice when Job was in that place, there was almost a time where his mind began to go from him, that he began to talk crazy. So saints, there's a reason why Satan don't want people to step into their prosperity. Because when you don't live the way that God created you to live, it start making you look at God with an evil eye. That's Satan's goal. When really it don't got nothing to do with God. God not the problem. What's the problem is that you haven't operated in the knowledge of God to receive that exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works in you. So a lot of times people don't receive that and then Satan capitalizes on that and torments the mind and starts telling the person, this is what God is doing to you. See, you ain't got no place to live. See, saints, that's why the Holy Spirit let me walk that path of homelessness. I know what it means to be inside of a shelter. So there are demons that are authors of poverty because when you are in poverty and when you're in sickness, when you're in diseases, those spirits can buffet you and talk bad about God to you because of what you're going through. So it's important that you let the Holy Spirit bring you into abundant life so that you can always have the proper perspective of God. Did you know that an abundant life is the healing of your body? 
So even though the sicknesses and diseases that you get, even if it's from sin, those sicknesses and diseases will be healed. Even if you get sicknesses and diseases from uh, doing the wrong thing, they'll be healed. That's what Psalm 103 is a covenant said. He heals all your diseases. Even the diseases that were self-inflicted, like you did it yourself. You made it happen. Like it was you. It wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> it was just you. Even those will be healed. Colossians says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That means that you can keep on expecting the glory to manifest in areas where there's grief. The glory takes the areas where there's grief. It says, let me just tell you something. Everybody will have different points in life where you have to be honest. And when I say honesty comes before prosperity, I want you to remember this. If you take a note, write that down. Honesty comes before prosperity. Honesty will come before prosperity because there'll come a time where you have to be honest that how you saw things was not correct. That's why the prosperity didn't come before times. You gotta be honest. Honesty comes before prosperity. So you have to recognize this is all me. You have to be honest with yourself. How do you spend your time? Are you always in the spirit? Are you always in the presence of God? No. Are you always dedicated? No. Do you feed off of the world at times? Yes. So when you give yourself fully over to the Holy Ghost, undivided, now you have authority in yourself to place a demand on your inheritance. You don't got authority in yourself until you get to that place. Until you're undivided in how you're spending your moments and your concentration, you can't really place a demand on things that belong to you. It's impossible. How could you do it? Because you're undivided. You, 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 you are divided in yourself. I want to talk to you about something real quickly. Unity is real powerful. And that's why Satan attacks unity. That's why Satan attacks marriage. That's why Satan attacks uh, children underneath their parents. You notice when your children get to a certain age, they start wanting to rebel. They start wanting to go against your orders because Satan is attacking the unity. Satan attacks unity when people are business partners. You know, God can put you with that business partner, but all of a sudden now they're jealous of you. They're looking at you. They say they acting weird and they, they wasn't acting like that before, but now they're acting funny. And says, I want to say this, when things go bad, it doesn't mean that God didn't authorize it. And that I, I want you to listen to what I'm saying here. Um, uh, pe people often say, how could two people divorce if God really put them together? Who God put together, no man break asunder. Look, it says no man break asunder. It's talking about people on the outside. But you yourself could break your marriage asunder. <laughs> <laughs> you catching what I'm saying? <laughs> Who God picked together, no man break asunder. Look, you could pick yourself, you could break it asunder though. It don't have to be no man on the outside. It's saying that people on the outside can't break this that God put together. But it's if the two people are united, a uh, united front, they're not united front. It can be breaking asunder. So, God could authorize two people to get married and then it doesn't work. God can authorize that you have a child and your child will be demonic. God authorized you to have the child. 
But the child has its choices. Saints, um, I can't tell you how many times in life. Do you know I have known people throughout the course of my life, right? And saints, his was so wild. I, the type of, I talked to, no, I don't even want to, I don't even want to, I don't even want to talk like that. Never mind. But let me say this. The Holy Spirit will tell me after I ask him, I'll ask him about somebody. I'll ask him, I'll say, what you think about this person? And he'll tell me the raw truth. And if I knew them before, according to like the natural, like you know how you meet people, you know them according to the natural, the Holy Spirit will say, this is not the same person. They don't live life. They not how you used to know them. They are different now. You're not hearing me. Saints, sometimes you look at somebody. You might say, this is my uncle. You probably have hung with your uncle. Two years passed. You don't know all the decisions that your uncle done made. You don't know who your uncle done slept with. You don't know if your uncle is doing Ouija boards and done done join all type of evil things. You don't know. You don't know. And oftentimes you try to reunite with people off of your former knowledge of them and you don't know who they are. Saints, you can have children. You think that the children came from you. You think that you raised the children. And you don't know that there's 2,000 demons inside of the child. There wasn't 2,000 demons inside of the child when you was raising them. They are at a place where now they're making decisions. They're going places. They're talking with people. They are texting people. They are hanging with people. They're having conversations. Their knowledge is learning things. That's not the same person you raise. You look at their face and you say, that's my son. That's my daughter. No, they're not. Saints in the world, the Holy Spirit is being poured out on movie directors. So there are a lot of movies right now where in the movie, parents are raising up children and then their children are becoming demon possessed and then they have to recognize I can't bypass that they're demonized. I have to deal with their demonized state even though I'm looking at their face and I'm saying this is my innocent Billy. This is my innocent Sarah. This is my lovely girl. No, 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 it's not my lovely girl no more. It's not my handsome son no more. This is somebody that is a murderer. This is somebody that is a rapist. This is somebody that is evil. Saints, I'm going to tell you something. Now, these things are not easy at all. It doesn't matter what level of rank and glory you walk in. It's not easy when you are familiar with somebody according to former knowledge and they have gone further in the demonic and now you, 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 there, there's, there's no way to associate themself or yourself with them or else you'll have to go into the demonic with them. That's the only way. So you'll have to betray God. Why does it not become easy? Because like I was saying to you, you pitch your emotions in your perception. So if you perceive a person some, a certain way, you pitch your, you tie your emotions to them in that place of perception. 
So if you look at somebody as innocent, this is my daughter, this is my son, and you look at them in the aspect, now you have to pit your emotions and attach it in that place to them. So when God delivers you, now he detaches the attachment. That's what deliverance is. God cuts the cords. You made a cord and God cuts it because you gave him permission to. Now, saints, here's the wild thing. How does God cut the cord? This is shocking. How does God cut the cord, prophet? He uses your hands. Yeah. See, you thought this was going to be a walk of flock or no hands. No, no, no. He's going to use your hands. He's not, he not going to do it for you. He's he going to cut the cord. He cut the cord, but he's going to cut it with your hands. That's why oftentimes people are like, you know, I, 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 I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. God don't do it. I don't know what's going to happen. If God don't do it, I don't know what's going to happen. That's why you end up in hell. Because God wasn't going to do it without your hands. So you thought that it was going to be a walker flocker and, and, and see, then you end up in flames. Because he was going to use your hands. Huh? You thought that <laughs> you, you thought it was gonna be no hands. to be strong and you have to learn what being strong means have you interpreted strength yet with your life do you know what it means to be strong being strong means to go beyond illegal compassion Being strong means to go beyond the, the, the intense urge to do something without God's guidance. Being strong means to attach yourself to the Holy Ghost 
while spirits that used to manipulate you are trying to attach themselves to you. That's what it means to be strong. Being strong means that your goal is more influential to your soul. That's what it means. Your goal is more influential to your soul. It's inspiring your soul to get there. You're not looking at pain. Strength is the ability to disrespect your discomfort. I'm not comfortable right now, but God is comfortable. And that's what matters to me. I don't live for my comfort. I don't live for my pleasure. Now I want the Lord to experience pleasure. His pleasure is more important to me than mine. He got mine. But I'm going to tell you something about strength. You can get to a degree in strength where it's no longer just I'm going to give God pleasure. I'm not worried about mine. You'll get to a place in strength where you're saying I adapt to being pleasured because God is pleasure. That's a higher degree of maturity. If you really want to hit the climax of strength, you're no longer just saying, because God want this, I'm going to do it, even though I don't want to do it. You'll adapt, you'll conform yourself into a river. And now the river is, God wants me to do it, and guess what? I love doing it. That's when you're at the pinnacle of strength. You want to go to the Mount Sinai of strength? Start saying, I love what God loves. I love the disconnection from this person. I love the freedom from this bad habit. I love not watching this on my phone. I love not going in their presence any longer. I love not fornicating with this wrong person that's not supposed to be using my body. Saints, when you get to a degree of strength, you'll get disgusted with every demonic relationship that you have in your life right now. You'll get disgusted. If you really want to know, you really want to know that you have crossed over from weakness to strength, you'll get disgusted when somebody reaches out to you to reclaim you back to the gates of hell. Did you know that when Satan wants to get you back on the path to hell, Satan doesn't say, come my child. Satan sends somebody that has influence they have influence to draw you in Satan uses bodies so just just always keep that in mind um, what's the level of your strength? What's the level of your strength? You can't talk for nobody else. What's the level of your strength? When you get to the climax of strength, you hate repeated cycles. You don't know that Satan been throwing the same demon at you in different clothing all your life. All your life, you've been seeing the same spirit in different apparel. 
It's the same spirit. Oh, I love him. Oh, it's so sweet. It's the same person in a different apparel. I was talking to my sons, right? The older in years, right? I was talking to my sons. And I told them, when you're talking to a woman sexually, that's not the way to find out who she is. You having sexual convers you ever have sexual conversations with a woman that you date? Just understand that's not the way to find out who she is. Because those are cake conversation. Literally it's some cakes involved. But <laughs> lit lit <laughs> Literally it's some cakes involved. But I I I but uh, I want you to see what I'm saying here. I said I said that's cake, that, that's you're not gonna find out nothing. You only see a woman through how she handles her anger. How do you handle when you're hurt? That's the only way you can see a woman. Women reveal themselves in several aspects. When they're hurt, when they're horny. <laughs> this deep, this deep, this deep. I ain't mean to bring out all them H's, but I ain't mean to bring out all them H's, but I'm telling you right now, Women reveal themselves <laughs> when when they're when they're when they're hurt, when they're horny, when they hate. If a woman hates somebody else, it's, it reveals itself. You start hearing them saying stuff. You know this one right here. You know this one right here. She used to be underneath the bridge. I don't know how she used to be underneath the bridge, but I I seen her two times. It was about 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, what you doing underneath the bridge? Then I saw a sniff some white substance. It looked like that same thing LeBron James be throwing up in the air when he about to go play basketball. <laughs> Horny. Hurt. Hate. Um, we can even add horrified. You can see a woman's fears when she's horrified. You see, you see what she is scared of. Just pit a rat, <laughs> just pit a rat in front of her. You'll be shocked how much a woman. <laughs> you'll be shocked how much women are prayer warriors until they see a rat. Hoka chaka chaka. This is a fake rat. This is a fake. I got this from Spencer's. They was doing a two for one. They was doing a two for one special. They was doing a two for one. They was doing a two for one special. This ain't real. This is from Spencer's. They was doing a two for one special. One was 50% off. It's just. Or, 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 or get, get a flying cockroach, a fake flying cockroach, <laughs> a robotic flying cockroach. You know, haka chaka, haka chaka, Satan, we bind you. Satan, the flying cockroach, you know, ran off. This is a fake roach, all right? This ain't even a flying cockroach. Look, I got the robot right here. My battery was going low, but I had enough battery just to pick it up here. To show you you're not doing no real spiritual warfare. So saints, your strength, only you could develop that part of you. Here's, here's, here's another word for strength. Did you know that strength has a synonym? A synonym. The synonym, it's a word. Another word for strength is joy. Saints, you can have love. 
right? But if you don't protect love with joy, the sorrow could set in and then you want to stop loving. Are you seeing this? You can have self-control, but if you don't have joy, the self-control could set in and now you no longer have. Uh, uh, the sorrow could set in and now you no longer have self-control. Another word for strength is joy. That's the synonym. Strength means excitement. The ability to develop entertainment within yourself. Now, since joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, which means that the Holy Spirit will minister joy to you if you're intentional about receiving it. But you've got to be intentional about receiving it. You have to want to be in joy in order for joy to fulfill its place in you. Because since, did you know that people that want to be angry, be angry? People that want to be depressed, be depressed? People that want to be jealous, be jealous? People that want to gossip, gossip. What you want to do, you will do. That's why Romans chapter 8 says that those that mind the things of the flesh, they go after the flesh. They mind the things of the flesh. They go after the flesh. If you mind the things of the spirit, you'll go after the spirit. Whichever one that you are taking yourself into determination to do, you will do. Saints, a rapist rapes off of the law of determination. They see the woman jogging. They watch her jogging every time and they wait until she's in a secluded place where nobody could stop them from grabbing you, taking you captive. They don't want nobody to intervene, call the cops. They don't want nobody to record you, pitch you on TikTok. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the rape. I'm just saying like, because this generation do everything. They record everything. So it's like, a rapist don't want to see themselves being seen. So they wait for the opportune time. Saints, I want you to hear this. And remember what I'm telling you. Keep this in your heart. If you don't get joy, you don't get delivered from nothing. That's why even the word of God talked about the joy of salvation. If you don't get joy, you don't get delivered from nothing. Because joy not only means you're free, but you enjoy the freedom. So therefore, Satan doesn't have a way to re-enter you through boredom, through sorrow. Because if you get sad, sadness makes you search. If you take a notes, write that down. Sadness makes you search. Do you know why people search? Why do people go, I've never been on a dating app. And I'll never go on a dating app. A dating app is you searching. You're searching. But you're searching because you're sad. Now, did you know that most sad people will never identify that they're sad? But your searching exposes your sadness. No, no, no. Watch this here. If there's a McDonald's down the street and you're in your phone searching for another McDonald's, it's because that McDonald's made you sad. My God, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. What? 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 If, 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 listen, if there is a Walmart down the street and you in your phone searching for another Walmart, even though you can see that Walmart down the street, it's because that Walmart made you sad. Was it customer service? Was it that they make you bag your own groceries like you work there and they don't pay you? Walmart because you, you hit a wall when you go into hit a wall. It blocked off you. You bagging your own groceries. They got you working the lady up there telling you, 
uh, uh, what's she telling you, talking about? Uh, just, just ring it up again. No, you're supposed to be ringing it up. I don't work here. You're supposed to be ringing it up. Can you ring it up, huh? She got her pants all high, belly all big, like old Otis. Got all her security attire. She don't want to bag nothing up. They want you to bag it up and then pay for it at the same time. No, if I'm going to pay, if I'm going to bag it up, I'm going to walk out with it. I ain't paying for nothing in here. Since one time there was a man at Walmart looking like Goof Troop. One time, it was, it was a long time ago, I went inside Walmart and uh, uh, it, said, it, said, it, said, it stopped. And the man was up there, bang, 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 bang. He was a racist now. He was a racist. I got to be honest. I, I, I don't really like to talk too strong on racism sometimes because I know that a lot of black people are bitter and, and they, they, they want to they wanna, they wanna use that as a reason to walk in hatred. But racism exists. It's sad. And it's demonic. But it exists. The man was a racist. How? How? How everybody with me look like they wait, make way more money than you. And then you, you stopping us. And then you let white people pass. You let, you let them, them other people pass. They pass the feet dirty and stuff. And man, stopping, searching, just searching. It's like, it's like we got pulled over. We got a police stop. And saints, I wanted to slap that man in his eyes. He has, he has some big old eyes. His eyes had looked like, his eyes had looked like, he looked like an amphibian. There was some big old eyes. Saints, them eyes was the biggest eyes I've ever seen in my life. I wanted to just slap them all across them eyes, just knock them out, pick them up, pin them back in the socket, knock them out again. Big old golf ball eyes. But saints, there's spirits inside of the person. And what is the spirits after? Joy. You know why? The spirits are giving him ideas. Because the spirits is targeting what? Joy. When Satan wants to affect your joy, you encounter evil through people, places, and things. You encounter being done wrong. Since I told you of a story, I had a nice car, right? The police officer, I saw them from a distance. I wasn't speeding or nothing. There was no reason to pull me over. But I sensed them because I was already in the spirit mentally. I sensed them were studying me and that they wanted to pull me over. I could read their mind. So since I'm in a lane and I go over to the left lane, the cop go over to the left lane. The cop hit their lights on. They pull me over to investigate me. A white lady come out. She get on her radio as if like I'm resisting arrest. She start calling for backup. I got cops all around my vehicle. This years ago, you know, I, when, I, when, I, when that happened to me, I got real pissed off. So I started doing prayers against the officers in my city. I ain't been stopped by cops in years, literally. I'm surrounded by all type of cops. Look, the cops come there, question, bat, 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 bat. They can't find nothing on me. They asking me what I do for a living because I got a nice car. They trying to smell weed. I don't smoke weed. They don't smell no cigarettes, so they, they clue this. What, what do you do? What do you do?
So say this. I want you to hear this. They did a racism stop. It had nothing to do with anything I did wrong. I didn't break no law. I didn't do nothing. Watch this here. The white woman pitting the system in the courts that I was driving on the wrong side of the road to oncoming traffic. The lady lied for me. Instead of her just saying, I racially profiled, I was wrong, bop, 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 it was nothing there. The lady now went to the extreme to get me in trouble. Me and the lady never got into an argument during the police stop, nothing. She, she was real combative, but I was calm. Because I know she demon possessed. Now watch this here. The lady lied on me. Now I'm being scheduled. I got to go fight this, 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 this. This lady lying. I wasn't driving on the wrong side of the road from oncoming traffic. The lady followed me. The lady switched lanes when I switched lanes. We going the direct way. And the lady lied. Saints, as I stand before the great God Jehovah, when she pulled me over, we was in a parking spot in front of a store. And everybody in the store, everybody was looking at me. They wanted to know, who is this? What's going on? What's this? All these cops out here. And everybody stopped what they was doing just to look. As I stand before the Father in heaven, I drove days later back to the place where that police officer stopped me and where my car was. And there was a big hole in the ground. This is not an exaggeration. This is not a theory. The place was blocked off with yellow tape, like a crime scene. And there was a big old wide hole in the ground. God said, I punched the ground for your sake. So the situation went into legal thing. It's my word against her. I won the case. They had to revoke my license, everything, because of her lie. And guess what? I won the case over her. And they was telling me, you got to get a lawyer. I said, I'm not using my lawyers for this dumb stuff. I'm not paying my lawyers nothing for this dumb lady. I'm going to fight with my fight, and we're going to win. I ain't using no lawyers for no stupid stuff like this. I'm not paying no lawyers for no stupid stuff like this. Because <laughs> you know when you win the case, you got to pay the lawyers a large percentage. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't paying no I ain't using my lawyers for this. And guess what? I won the case. And guess what? My license was restored. And guess what? The thing was removed off of my account. And guess what? And guess what? That lady was judged for lying on me. And guess what? I didn't have to fight her with fists. I didn't have to fight her with threats. I didn't have to fight her with words. I kept my strength. Because my strength is my joy. And when you're in joy, you don't react to your enemy off of their tactics. You react to God and God alone. See, the minute you start trying to fight your enemy, you don't got no joy and you don't got no victory. You don't fight your enemy because they're fighting you. You just react to God. That's all. You only got one thing to do for the rest of your life is respond to the Lord. That's all. Let them fight. Let them fight. 